Be confused about how much protein you should eat for optimal health and longevity. We are not alone. Today I'm going to show you why the conventional wisdom about protein intake might be wrong and how you can optimize your diet for both muscle health and longevity. Let's start with a surprising fact. While many nutrition experts, including myself, often recommend a higher protein intake, especially for older adults and athletes, there's some research out there that suggests lower protein diets may actually help to extend lifespan. So how can we reconcile these seemingly contradictory ideas? Well, let me show you. For years, we've been told that higher protein intakes is crucial, especially as we age. And here's why. We need it for muscle maintenance as we get older, our bodies become less efficient at using protein to build and maintain muscle. This condition known as anabolic resistance means we need more protein just to maintain our existing muscle mass. That's why people often lose muscle as they age. Functional independence. And what this means is that older adults need a higher protein intake and that's been associated with better strength, physical performance and lean muscle mass. In many cases, it's often the opposite that's true. As people grow older, they tend to eat less protein. And one way around that is supplementing with protein shakes if they don't feel like eating. Also for maintaining muscle mass, it's not just about strength, it's also crucial for preventing chronic diseases like diabetes and obesity. Often when people eat less protein, they're eating more carbohydrates. Given these benefits, many experts recommend protein intakes well above the recommended daily allowance of 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight per day. Some people suggest, you know, 1.25, 1.2 to 1.5 is great for older adults, even higher for people who are injured or ill. And don't forget, whenever you see the RDA, that's the minimum amount that you need to just to survive. It's not looking at optimal health or longevity. But here's where things get interesting. While high protein intakes are beneficial for muscle health and overall wellness and keeping people you know, stronger and healthier. In animal studies, protein restriction has been shown to increase lifespan by around 20%. And this effect is not just in animals, like there's also people like the Okinawans, the famously long-lived Japanese island. And there's a number of centenarians there that you have a lower protein to carbohydrate diet. Well, one of the biggest things with these longevity, you know, looking at people's populations, it's not just about their diet. Often they have great social connections and they're very active and all of these things play into account when you're looking at optimal health and longevity. So how do we resolve these contradictory findings? And the key may be understanding that our protein needs change as we age. And so in middle age, you may want the moderate amounts of protein, not the 0.8 grams per kilo. You wanna get up around the 1.2 to 1.5 or higher if you are an athlete. But as we get older, we want to increase our protein intake to combat that anabolic resistance and maintain muscle mass. And for some people who are older, they may need to spread their protein throughout the day because they probably can't stomach a huge meal of 60 to 100 grams of protein in one hit. Exercise is crucial, not just, you know, throughout life, but especially as people get older. Often they go for walks and they can be active, but you want to really make sure that as you get older, you're using strength training and you're never too old to start. The other myth I'd like to bust is, for a long time it was thought that you could only have 30 grams of protein in one meal. Anything more than that and the protein was wasted. I thought this myself, but there's recent research showing that that is not true. And there was one study where people had 100 grams of protein and it showed a greater muscle and whole body protein synthesis for those who only took in 25 grams. So this is showing that you don't just cap out at 30 grams. So what we're seeing is that the total amount of protein you eat in a day is more important than obsessing over like how much you get in each meal and making sure you get 20 to 30 grams per meal. And the protein synthesis can you know, plateau temporarily, but if you eat a larger amount, you get prolonged benefits over a period of time rather than a quick spike. Many people, they may find it easier to eat five 30 gram protein meals or four times 40 or something like that. But for people who are intermittent fasting, there's no reason why you couldn't get away with two meals in a day and have a very large protein intake if your digestion symptom can handle it. So as I said, the recommended daily allowance is 0.8 grams per kilo of body weight. That equals around about 55 grams for a 150 pound person. But as I said, this is just to keep you alive and it's not 
optimal. Dr. Peter Atia and many other longevity focused experts agree that sticking to the RDA, RDA alone, and you're probably under eating protein, especially as you get older. So aiming for higher amounts in that 1.2 to 2.2 grams per kilogram of body weight. I believe Peter Atia aims for that around two grams per kilo of body weight a day. Personally, I would struggle to eat you know, 180 to 200 grams of protein in a day, but you just gotta work out what works the best for you. There's no hard and fast rule for everybody. If you're generally healthy and you wanna maintain or increase your muscle mass, shoot for that 1.2 to 2.2 gram range. And you know, if you're trying to build muscle and doing a lot of strength training, you wanna be higher in the range. 1.2 is probably your lower amount. And so as I said, you don't need to distribute protein throughout the day, but you go, can you eat that much protein in two meals? So in theory, yes, but practically that can be tough and it may be, you know, leave you feeling really stuffed if you, and not being able to digest the food as effectively as you want to. So you're probably better off having, you know, three, four meals of protein a day, get to that 120, 170 grams of protein throughout the day. If you're still struggling to get that much protein, having like a protein shake or a protein drink is an easy way to get those levels up. So for breakfast, you may have like a three egg omelet with, you know, some cheese or Greek yogurt. Uh, lunch could be salmon and vegetables, maybe with some legumes if you tolerate them well. Dinner could be some type of lean protein with like chicken, fish. And then there's different you know, protein snacks out there. Like as I said, you can get a protein shake, you can get really good quality beef jerky these days. I'm not a big fan of the protein bars because you know they can be okay in emergencies. I'll eat them when I'm traveling, but they're usually not that healthy. There's some better ones out there, but you know, read the labels, protein snack bars aren't the greatest thing on to rely on your daily protein intake. So while animal proteins like dairy, eggs, and the lean meats typically are better sources of protein, the amino acid content is complete. But if you're plant-based, you know, you can still get a good amount of protein. You just gotta combine them with different sorts of proteins, you know, beans and rice, using things like tofu. And so there's a whole bunch of high protein vegetarian options. You've got more choices if you will still eat dairy or have some eggs, because dairy is great protein source along with eggs. But if you're vegan, you, know, you might just have to be looking at some of these vegan protein shakes like the pea proteins, rice protein, uh, looking at tofu, soy, it's probably one of the best vegetarian sources of protein, but also nuts and seeds and legumes, lentils. You just may have to consume more food to get enough protein. But there's plenty of famous athletes out there that eat a vegetarian diet and doing quite well. So another question I often get is the timing of protein. And this is something that, you know, bodybuilders or newbie bodybuilders sometimes obsess about is getting their protein right after they work out. Well, as long as your meals, are, you know, as long as you're getting those protein intakes throughout the day, this is probably less important. The timing of protein straight after a workout is not essential. As long as you're eating in the next hour or two, that's gonna be enough to help shift you from muscle breakdown to muscle building. So for most people, especially as you get older, you really wanna focus on increasing your protein intake and not just having enough protein, but also doing strength training and muscle building activities and they will work better together. Remember protein and protein shakes, they're just not for bodybuilders. It's crucial for, crucial for healthy aging, muscle mass, and reducing you know, muscle wasting as people get older. That's why I've recommended a protein shake for my mum because she just simply wasn't eating enough protein. So let me know if you've got any questions or if you've got any comments of a favorite protein, put it in the comments below and I'd be interested to read.